Fifth metatarsal, Jones fractures. Internal fixation. A video lecture. This video has been produced from a book source of key techniques in orthopedic surgery. We would like to thank editors Stephen H. Stern, Christopher M. Bono, and Matthew D. Saltzman. Abstract. Jones fractures occur in the proximal diametaphyseal region of the fifth metatarsal, which is a relative watershed area for blood supply, and are associated with a prolonged time for healing and an increased rate of symptomatic non-unions. In patients who desire a quicker return to activity, athletes, or cases in which bony healing appears to be delayed, surgical treatment with intramedullary fixation of the fifth metatarsal is an appropriate consideration. Proper surgical technique and intraoperative fluoroscopic imaging will help ensure an uncomplicated outcome. Generally, solid screws of the appropriate length to achieve endosteal screw purchase within the isthmus of the fifth metatarsal provide the best internal fixation. Jones fractures are transverse fractures located at the proximal metaphysial diaphysial junction of the fifth metatarsal. Jones fractures have a much higher incidence of developing a symptomatic non-union or fibrous union than simple avulsion fractures of the fifth metatarsal tuberosity, located more proximally, figure. Commonly, non-operative treatment includes a short leg cast and non-weight bearing for six to eight weeks. After this period, patients can be converted to either a short leg brace or walking cast, which is maintained until fracture union has occurred usually another 6 to 8 weeks. Indications. 1. Proximal 5th metatarsal, Jones, fractures that fail to show progression toward bony union after treatment in a non-weight bearing short leg cast for 6 to 8 weeks. 2. Acute proximal 5th metatarsal, Jones, fractures in young athletic individuals who wish to shorten the time to return to sport and minimize the prolonged course of immobilization and rehabilitation that is associated with non-operative treatment 3. Proximal 5th metatarsal, Jones, fractures in patients who desire surgical management, as opposed to non-operative treatment. 4. Stress fractures, delayed unions, or non-unions of the proximal 5th metatarsal. Contraindications. 1. Medullary canal diameter that is too small to accommodate an adequate sized screw. 2. Patients with conditions that may increase the risk of wound healing problems, for example, peripheral vascular disease, diabetes mellitus, heavy tobacco use, relative. Preoperative preparation. 1. Determine the appropriate screw size by measuring the width of the fifth metatarsal's medullary canal on the preoperative radiographs. Commonly, a screw that is between 4.5 and 6.5 mm in diameter will provide appropriate canal fill and purchase and have adequate strength for internal fixation. 2. A solid screw is generally stronger and preferred to a cannulated screw. However, cannulated screw instrumentation, guide wires, Cannulated drill bits slash reamers, of the appropriate size can often be used to facilitate preparation of the fifth metatarsal medullary canal for screw placement. 3. Optimal screw purchase within the isthmus of the medullary canal is usually obtained with screws less than 50 mm in length. Due to the plantar lateral bowing of the fifth metatarsal, care should be taken to avoid using a screw that is too long to avoid lateral gapping at the fracture site or iatrogenic fracture of the metatarsal shaft. Special instruments, position, and anesthesia. 1. A cannulated screw system will facilitate intramedullary screw placement when using a relatively percutaneous technique. 2. Intraoperative fluoroscopy and a radiolucent operating table are necessary for accurate screw placement. 3. The patient is positioned supine on the operating table with a large padded roll placed beneath the ipsilateral buttock. This helps to internally rotate the affected extremity. 4. The procedure can be done under an ankle block with the use of monitored anesthesia care and intravenous sedation. Alternatively, general or other methods of regional anesthesia can be employed. Tips and Pearls 1. Prior to the procedure, Ensure that adequate fluoroscopic images of the fifth metatarsal can be obtained in multiple projections, including on teroposterior, lateral, and oblique views. 2. 
Prior to the skin incision, place a guide wire directly over the shaft of the fifth metatarsal. Assess its position with fluoroscopic images in the antero-posterior and lateral planes. Use a marking pen to draw lines along the guide wire. These lines will help you to achieve proper placement of the intraoperative intramedullary guide wire. 3. If the initial position of the intraoperative intramedullary guide wire is undesirable, try to reposition it while spinning the drill in reverse, counterclockwise. This helps prevent the threaded tip of the guide wire from engaging the previous track. 4. If a solid intramedullary screw is being inserted, the guide wire and cannulated drill bit from a cannulated screw system can be used, if the cannulated drill bit is of the appropriate diameter, to facilitate accurate intramedullary placement of the hole. 5. If a fully threaded screw is used, the near, proximal, segment of the fifth metatarsal should be overdrilled to the diameter of the screw. This creates a gliding hole and allows for interfragmentary compression across the fracture site. What to avoid? 1. Avoid using a screw with a diameter that is too large for the medullary canal of the fifth metatarsal. This can result in an iatrogenic fracture of the fifth metatarsal. 2. Attempt to avoid injuring branches of the sural nerve and developing an incisional neuroma by bluntly dissecting through the subcutaneous tissue. Postoperative care issues. 1. The extremity should be placed in a short leg splint or cast immediately after surgery. Strict non weight bearing is maintained for the affected foot. 2. At two weeks post surgery, the sutures are removed and the extremity placed in a short leg brace. Early functional rehabilitation exercises for the foot and ankle can be started. 3. For acute fractures, at two weeks post-surgery, weight-bearing can be advanced as tolerated in the short leg brace. At six weeks post-surgery, the short leg brace may be discontinued if early fracture healing is apparent radiographically. 4. For non-unions and for some stress fractures, weight-bearing should be deferred for approximately four to six weeks post-surgery and the short leg brace continued until follow-up radiographs show clear signs of fracture healing. Operative Technique 1. Position the patient supine on the operating room table. Place a rolled blanket beneath the ipsilateral buttock to internally rotate the limb. Place the ankle tourniquet just above the malleoli. 2. Perform an ankle block with a 1 to 1 mixture of 1% lidocaine and half a percent bupivacaine solution, without eponephrine. 3. Prepare and drape the limb in a sterile fashion. Exsanguinate the foot and inflate the tourniquet to 250 mm Hg. 4. Make a longitudinal incision along the lateral knee aspect of the midfoot. It should start at the tip of the fifth metatarsal tuberosity and extend proximally approximately 3 cm. Figure 5. Use careful blunt dissection to deepen the exposure down to the tip of the fifth metatarsal tuberosity. 6. Position the guide wire's soft tissue sleeve so that it is directly on the tip of the fifth metatarsal tuberosity. Confirm its location with antero-posterior and lateral fluoroscopic images. Figure 7. Orient the shaft of the soft tissue sleeve so it is in line with the shaft of the fifth metatarsal. 8. Drill the guide wire through the soft tissue sleeve and into the fifth metatarsal. 9. Confirm accurate intramedullary placement of the guide wire with fluoroscopy. Multiple projections should be assessed, including antero-posterior, lateral, and oblique views. 10. Use the depth gauge to determine the appropriate length for the screw. 11. Drill over the guide wire with the appropriate cannulated drill bit inserted through the soft tissue protector. Periodically stop and remove the drill bit to clean bone debris from its flutes to prevent clogging. A. If a cannulated screw is being used, insert the screw over the guide wire. Advance it into the fifth metatarsal. Once the screw has entered the metatarsal's medullary canal, withdraw the guide wire back into the screw. This minimizes the chance of the wire breaking or becoming incarcerated in the bone. However, do not completely remove the guide wire from the screw until the screw's final position is confirmed as satisfactory with the image intensifier. B. If a solid intramedullary screw is being inserted, remove the guide wire. Advance the solid screw into the channel just created by the cannulated drill. 
Use fluoroscopic imaging to ensure the screw is advancing into a satisfactory position in the intramedullary canal. 12. Assess the screw's final position with fluoroscopic images in the anteroposterior and lateral planes. Figure 13. Deflate the tourniquet, confirm hemostasis, and irrigate the wound. 14. Close only the skin using interrupted 4 to 0 nylon sutures. 15. Apply a sterile dressing to the wound. Place the foot in a well padded short leg splint or cast. Thank you.